Welcome everyone out in our virtual world this evening, um, and thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you who are joining us virtually and would like to have a, a copy of our agenda, it is available on our website at sycamoreschools.org in the Board of Education area. Um, you can see not only the agenda for this meeting, but also agendas and minutes for past meetings. Um, and once minutes are approved, they are also posted to that page. Um, this evening, we have our two moderators, Mr. Chad Lewis and Mr. Bill Fritz, who will be uh, monitoring the chat feature of the meeting. Um, we ask that you only use the chat feature if you are having technical difficulties, if you're having problems with sound, and, and just need to make us aware of any of those issues out there. Um, if you do have questions about that you would like uh, to be sent to the board, you can either send those to me at weatherby at sycamoreschools.org and we'll get back with you after the meeting. Um, you can also send questions that you may have um, to our two moderators and they will get those to us as well for response after the meeting. Um, and I did not uh, receive anything from anyone for, for resident participation prior to the meeting. Um, so I don't know that we have any, any requests. Okay, Mr. Tess, do we have anything? No, okay. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. Okay, moving along to the superintendent's agenda, Mr. Forstoffel. Mrs. Weiss, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, as been our custom, we'd like to give a healthy AIDS uh, update. Uh, that'll be brief and there'll be no slides related <laughs> to that. We see that yeah, sure. Oh, we have that, okay. So, um, I just want to talk for a moment about uh, the work that's been done over the last several weeks um, as, as we've approached somewhat of a milestone, and that includes providing vaccinations for our staff. As, as the board knows and the community knows, uh, we have partnered with um, our tried and true health partner in TriHealth um, to uh, partner with us to make sure that those staff that were interested have a way to get, get a vaccine. And as you know, the board has received all the communications. We've worked incredibly hard. And special thanks to Mrs. Spencer, Mrs. Weber, Ms. Von Bright for all the work that they've done. And so this past weekend, uh, we had uh, our tier one staff members uh, receive their first shot. That was upwards of over 400 staff members that received their shot. Feedback that I've gotten, um, not only from TriHealth, but from other, other parties, specific, specifically those that were in attendance and had their vaccine, that the trial process was very efficient, um, accommodating for, for our staff, which is what we want to do. Um, and it, it needs to be noted that when a staff member receives their first vaccine shot, they're automatically scheduled for their second one. Uh, and for us, it's the Pfizer, um, and it's a three week out, 21 day out. So that, that's a good thing. So this weekend, the remaining staff, upwards 300 plus staff, will um, get their um, second dose or first dose. Um, and then schedule theirs um, for 21 days out. So one of the things that, that as superintendent I'm thinking about um, as we lean towards or lean forward uh, to that tier one, those are the people that got their shot this past weekend, get the, the second vaccine or the second dose is what we're hearing um, both from our medical professionals and from people that have actually had it is that there, there's the potential for some increased side effects as a result of that second vaccine. Um, so 
What then does that mean then for that Monday? Remember now, the second dose for tier one is March 6 and 7, Saturday, Sunday. And then we are in school on March 8, okay? So what I need to start thinking about is, could there be a potential impact to our staff on that Monday following that second dose? Um, and then what impact obviously that our core mission is what that could have on the instruction of our students. So the options around that are, uh, we have school as normal, um, if we don't believe there's going to be any significant impact, uh, we think about a remote day or declare a calamity day, um, depending upon what we think could be the impact. So one of the things uh, throughout this whole process, I've not uh, pretended to be a medical expert, nor never will be. So I'm starting to consult with the trial doctors to get some data on uh, what they think would be the potential impact to our staff on that Monday. 12, 24 hours after that. And then I have to start thinking about what we may need to do as a school district. Because the last thing we want to do um, is open school. We don't have enough staff to run our schools. That would not be the right thing to do. So we'd like to get ahead of that if possible. Um, I don't know where I'm going to land because I don't have all the information yet. Um, but the people that are going to give me the information are, you know, are the medical professionals. Trial has, their whole staff has already been vaccinated. So they've got data that shows what the impact has been for them. So I've asked them for that and I hope we'll have that at some point in time. So um, more information, you know, whatever decision is made, we'll do it in the interest of the health and safety and efficient operation of our schools um, and do it in the right way. So again, I, I want the community to know we feel privileged and honored uh, to be part of this vaccine process. Um, certainly our, our staff and, and our teachers and our bus drivers and our EAs and custodians that are in the buildings every day deserve this level of, of protection for their help, um, and we're honored to be able to provide that to them. Um, and from all intents and purposes, after we got through the scheduling process, first uh, blush of it this past weekend, it went really, really well. So I welcome any questions about that, um, but that's all the update I have to this point. Mr. Forsoff, I'll yep. just echo that I've talked to several teachers and bus drivers who echo the same comments that you, that you made of how efficient the process was, um, how well um, it went over, um, we're very thankful uh, for all the work that you have done and your staff has done to get those vaccinations. So thank you. Could you um, just remind us of approximately what percentage of our staff is getting vaccinated? Yeah, it was about 85, 86% of our staff. That's great. Um, and uh, I, I do need to publicly thank um, Trial, not that anybody from Trial is listening, but I think we can get it in the minutes anyway. But um, they have been incredibly responsive. Um, to, to us as the leadership team and individually to staff. Um, when there's been a scheduling issue, we're working through some, um, some scheduling now where we have certain people can't were scheduled but couldn't get it because they were quarantined or COVID. And, and you know, some of our, our staff that are, are pregnant, you know, based on the advice of their physician, couldn't get it. They have communicated to me that they will re individually reach out to every one of those people and make that work for them at some point in time. So that, that's a good effort. And I think that gives me a little comfort as to why we picked try out to move forward. Mr. Forstoff, I would, I would also like to give a big thank you to Haley Rust in my department yep. because she was really instrumental in pulling all the data together on all of our all of our staff that try help needed to be able to set up the scheduling. Um, yeah, so she did a great job in, in helping us take that list of those people who wanted the vaccination and combining it with everything we had in payroll and getting it into the format that tri health needed so i'd really like to thank kaylee as well for, for her work on that absolutely absolutely and and, and I'll, I'll you know we certainly we, we make the best decisions we can here but we need input from other people to help us make those decisions so members of the teachers association and, and the OPC. We're continually this. They heard things that we needed to address from a communication standpoint. We tried to be as responsive um, and, and, and accommodating as we could to make sure everyone had the most latest and the latest information in order to make sure this process went well. So, all good. Thank you, Mr. Forstoffel. And yeah, you know, just to echo Mr. Ballant's comments, I mean, I think it's it's a testament to your team and just the organization that they brought to this, and then the partnership that we have with Sky Health. And, and moving this forward. And, and thank you to all of our staff who are partaking in these vaccinations. That's very important. Um, and we thank you as a board. Absolutely, appreciate that. 
Okay. All right. Ready for the next one? Sure. Okay. Um, I, I am absolutely thrilled, excited, um, over the moon, whatever you want to call it, to make two really um, what I think are impactful announcements tonight. So um, I, I'd like to kind of go back in history just a little bit if I can. Um, in April of 2019, before we came to this community and, and requested a bond issue from them, the Board of Education um, committed as part of that resolution um, to only move forward with the construction of a stadium on the campus of Sycamore High School until a minimum of $2.5 million was raised privately. I thought that was a great um, a great commitment and showed good fiscal stewardships to our community. Um, so again, as we as we fast forward from that April to November, um, and we were so humbled and blessed by the community to show that they showed their trust in us and gave us approval for our bond issue, our team began thinking about, you know, what is that fundraising or for lack of a better term, capital campaign look like to reach that threshold. Um, and we had a, an ultimate goal of holding a more broad-based community campaign. We had it all mapped out, we had a plan, we had a title, always an aviator campaign, and we were ready to go. Well, then March 12th came, um, and everything kind of shut down. And so we had to, for very good reasons, being sensitive to the community, being sensitive to the impact of the COVID uh, virus on our, our community, we paused that, which was the right thing to do at that time. Um, but, however, even though we paused the more broader campaign, we, we continued with some more targeted conversations uh, with some interested people that we had relationships built with and had already at least expressed a little interest um, in helping us reach that threshold. Um, and it's my, under, it's my absolute honor tonight that as a result of some of those private conversations, understanding, of course, we have not done the broad-based um, campaign yet, that we have reached that $2.5 million threshold. We've attained it. And so I need the community to know that we've stood by what we said we would do. Um, and we've reached that $2.5 million threshold. So a um, couple of things that I want to call out, most of which um, are thank yous. And I, I've given you kind of just a, a bucket of where some of those donations are coming from. You will notice that we have a very um, humbling uh, gift of 1.75 million from an anonymous donor. Um, our boosters, our athletic boosters, as always, have been incredibly, incredibly supportive and have committed um, $250,000 uh, to this project. Uh, Mark Seeger and his family, equal amount, and you're going to learn a little bit more about Mr. Seeger in just a moment when I when I announce the other home run. Um, announcement. And then the last two, we have a, a variety of people within a couple of groups. We've got a specific alumni group that's, that's putting together some donations. And understand, of course, that's where it stands right now. Okay. Doesn't mean that's where it's going to end. There's a, a real good possibility that in both of these, once we continue and, and we think the timing is right, both of those numbers will go north as well, which is a good thing. So we've reached our threshold. We're excited about that. Uh, understand, of course, that uh, we are still monitoring when we think the timing is right to engage the broader community in this. Again, you've heard me say this frequently, that we want to be sensitive to our community um, before we do this. Um, and, I, and I hope the community will put their trust in me to know when that time is right. Um, and then we'll start to think about the timing for that moving forward. Uh, in terms of the actual timeline uh, for the stadium, um, we're aiming for an open of August of 2022. Uh, we're going to have to do some things maybe a little differently for this coming season. Um, and, and Mr. Harden is working on a plan to make sure that that, that, that is, um, it comes to fruition. So I will pause with that. Any questions or comments from the board related to that one before I move on? No, I think it's a great job um, really to tie out that uh, commitment we had to the community to raise 2.5. You definitely uh, got ahead of the game, put together a robust plan of uh, community support to get this started. I know that's not the end of it, but it's been really a great shot out of the gate to get to where we are. 
I'd like to thank you, Mr. Forstoffel, and you, Mr. Hart, and, and everyone involved from the district to bring this uh, day to us. Uh, this is, a, as you said, um, really a, a, a hallmark of the community support that we have here at Sycamore. And um, it doesn't happen by chance. It's cultivating relationships over time and people feeling proud of the district that they're in. Yeah, I, I agree with all those comments, and I, you know, I want to publicly thank on behalf of the, the board all those people listed up there. Um, One point seven five million dollars is a tremendous gift to bestow on the district. So, to our anonymous donor and their family, thank you very much, um, and to the Seegers as well as the other groups there as well. Um, we couldn't do this without the support of community members like them, um, and it's greatly appreciated by the board and by the community. So, thank you very much. I would just add to you, I we uh, set up the Greater Cincinnati Foundation Always an Aviator Fund, and we have already received half a million dollars in contributions to that fund. So that's that's great news. So not only have they pledged it, they've already started to, to um, forward those funds to the district. So that has also been a really successful partnership, and I think one that's been valued by those donors who, who are contributing to the, to the project. Okay, so thank you, board. I appreciate you acknowledging and, and affirming the work of, of those great people, some of which are not named listed up on, on the screen. That, that, that's awesome. So my next uh, announcement, uh, let me build a little context around that one. So as we were having these conversations, and even prior to when we started some of these conversations around private funding, uh, we, we interacted with and, and began conversations with um, a truly a, a staple in our community, Mark Seeger, um, who happens to be a 1979 graduate of Sycamore High School and has blessed uh, the Sycamore family with two sons, Jonathan, a 13 graduate, and Christopher, a 16 graduate, um, and certainly the boss of the family, his wife, Sandra. Uh, they're just an amazing uh, Sycamore family. And Mark had a dream of really enhancing uh, the pool um, at Sycamore High School. It went through several iterations um, and really um, we had long going conversations about what that might look like um, and what potentially his financial contribution or gift could be to that um, as it relates to not only the, the enhancement of our pool related to the, the swimming program, but the enhancement around water polo as well. Strong, the Seeger family are strong supporters uh, of both of those programs. So as a result of that, and after multiple, multiple conversations, it is my honor uh, tonight uh, to announce that the Seeger family um, is gifting the district $3 million towards renovation of what will be titled uh, the Seeger Family Natatory. Um, that's an amazing and humbling um, gift and, and donation to the community. Um, and when I say humble, um, I think that speaks volumes uh, to the Seeger family themselves. They are a humble and giving uh, family, and we are we are so grateful uh, for what um, they're willing to do for us to enhance our existing pool at Sycamore High School. So the community may want to know what exactly might that look like um, once it gets going and once the renovation at the high school along with uh, the pool renovation would look like. But before I do that, you will see um, the Seeger family there, Mark and his wife, Sandra, um, and Christopher and Jonathan there. Um, interestingly enough, in that picture, we have a Buckeye shirt and a Michigan shirt. Yeah. Not sure what that's all about. <laughs> I do know what that's about. Um, but if, if the Seegers are on there, I hopefully they're chuckling. So, so let's give just a snapshot uh, of what we're looking at in the vision for what the, the, the renovated pool at Sycamore High School will look like. There's, a, there's a, another picture following this, but basically the components will be on the current pool site. We will increase the pool from a six lane to an eight lane pool. We will in, include a one meter and three meter diving. Uh, we will have a, a depth that accommodates water polo as well. Um, and here's part of the home run vision for uh, Mr. S uh, Seeger and his family. Seating will accommodate over 400 spectators. Uh, and that in and of itself 
um, really puts us uh, head and above what other pools are in the area. Um, so you can kind of see the schematic of it here. Uh, we have been working with uh, SHP and our design uh, uh, team to make sure that how this is going to fit in the existing renovation. We are thrilled with it, um, but the, the, the community may want to know what does it really look like other than a schematic drawing. So let me show you that as well. Here's the initial rendering of what the pool will look like. Um, and we are excited. Um, you will notice that if you go to the top, uh, kind of the top corner where there's some people standing, if you will remember um, the designs of the renovation of the high school in the new entryway where the athletic entrance is now, you will see that that's where that entrance will be. The pool will be right off that mark, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Right? Yeah. So um, we're excited about that. You can see the enhanced um, the, the enhanced seating spectators will come from the upper level into their spectators, which will protect the swimmers and the coaches uh, on the pool deck and kind of keep that separate. Um, and this is an exciting, exciting opportunity uh, for the Sycamore High School and for the swimming and the water polo program. It's just a great day to be an aviator. So, Mark, anything, Mr. Harden, our athletic director, anything you want to share? No, I think I would just echo what, what you said, Frank. I, I mean, it's you know, this is, it's, 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 it's really the culmination of, of, of like Mr. Comerford said, just the building of, of really some special relationships with all those folks, even going back to the stadium. But it has been an honor over the last couple of years to work with the Seeger family and, and some, you know, a family who's just so interested in giving back and, and to this community and, and has, this is a real passion project for them, just as it is for, for me. So it's, um, it's, it's been an honor to work with them and to continue to work with them. And we're just obviously beyond grateful to take um, the opportunity to just have what I think will be one of the, the premier high school pools um, in the area and a broad area. You know, like, like you said, just the ability now to, to, if we think about where the pool is, as far as spectators are concerned, to be able to have, you know, every member of your family and friends to comfortably come and watch watch a meet, um, to be able to host some larger things that we really haven't been able to accommodate before. I just am beyond grateful to Mark and Sandra and the boys um, for giving uh, me the opportunity to work with them over the last couple of years. It, it is, it, I, I'm very grateful. It's a, it's a great day. It's a great day. So I, I'm assuming in Zoom world, the, the Seegers are out there somewhere. I hope they're, they're tuned in, but and I'm not going to put them on the spot, but from the superintendent and the board of education um, and the athletic department and the community at Sycamore High School to all the Seeger family, we want to extend our heartfelt thanks, appreciation, gratitude um, to, for this generous gift. Um, and we will get it right. Uh, we'll get your vision right as we move forward. So that's uh, any comments from the board? Just, let me just say, I mean, it's just amazing. And, and thank you so much to the Seeker family for their generosity and their vision and their commitment to Sycamore. And, and we, the board is just is grateful and, and so appreciative of, of your donation. Thank you so much. Does anyone else want to? Yeah, I would just, you know, I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Sager on, Sager on multiple occasions, and he, he truly cares about the school district um, and his vision, what uh, we can do, you know, what the school district can become. Um, and so, you know, on behalf of the board, I also would like to thank him and his family for everything that they have done and are doing for our district. Um, and it's an honor to uh, have such outstanding members in our community who continue to support Sycamore. Um, even though they've, uh, you know, they've graduated, their kids have graduated, but they still give back to the community uh, for our future aviators. So on behalf of myself, the board, and all the aviators and future aviators, I would like to say thank you. Yeah, to, to the Seegers, you know, great neighbors, great community members, great aviators. I know when uh, I see you and talk to you, you're always engaged in what's going on with the school. And this is just one more indication over and above of how much you guys care about the school, uh, what it's meant to you, what it's going to mean to everyone else in the future. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, 
a great day, just, just a really great day. So just to put a kind of a bow on this for now, we have written a public uh, press statement that we will release uh, announcing these two milestones. Uh, and so the community can have some flavor of what we talked about for those that weren't with us tonight. Um, and we're going to continue with our work. We're, we're going to continue to be mindful of when our next outreach to the broader community might be around this. Um, and so we'll keep the board updated um, as we move forward. So I appreciate everybody's uh, interest and enthusiasm in this this evening. Well, thank you, Mr. Forsuffle. Okay, um, Master Facility Plan Update. Okay, I will turn this over to Mr. Lewis. Um, that's an, a pretty it's a pretty exciting uh opportunity to follow up after you know adding some additional scope to our master facility planning process with this great uh donation from the seeger family the one thing i would say to other interested donors and other interested people that want to join in on the project that are out there in zoom world i'm sure mr harden will take your call because uh, he is excited about, you know, helping finish off that uh, commitment that, you know, we, we need to finish that project. So thank you again to Mr. Seeger for getting us going on that uh, endeavor. From a, from a master facility planning standpoint, um, our high school, if you have not been there recently, you know, it's really been transformed in a very short period of time. Uh, there are temporary classrooms being built uh, they were originally slated to be finished towards the end of March. I am happy to report um, from a scheduling standpoint, they will actually be finished uh, before spring break. Uh, so we will be able to move teachers, move uh, st office staff, administration, counseling staff to their temporary homes. And we're actually going to be able to turn over eight classrooms to begin renovations earlier than expected. They were not expected to be started until sometime in May. Uh, so now we are going to get started right after or during spring break once the moves are complete. So uh, again, I never like to say we're ahead of schedule. So I'll just say we're on schedule with a cushion. Um, and th those moves, uh, uh, again, I have to mention that the counseling staff and the administration and the office staff are going to be moving to temporary homes for the next, you know, two plus years of the construction process. So, you know, a big thank you to Mr. Mater and his team for, you know, leading by example and being able to, you know, feel good about being displaced for the greater good of the building. Because, uh, you know, not a lot of people would make that sacrifice and he and his team have done it by example and they're going to, they're going to be in temporary homes. So, the next time you go in to find them, it may be looking a lot different where you find them. They may be on mobile desks in the hallway for all you know. So um, we're, we're impressed with our uh, general contractor, HGC, who has been working hard to get everything um, completed. And, and again, they're doing so in, in such an efficient and effective manner. Uh, we're, we're very pleased. Uh, the high school uh, stadium project, just a couple of quick points about that. We are working towards uh, a planning commission meeting where we will seek out some approvals from the city of Montgomery. Uh, so obviously with the announcement to my, tonight that we've met our goal, we feel confident that we can move forward with the planning around that. And really the big approval is just how much parking we're going to need to have on the facility site Will they approve the concept plan for um, the facility? And then there's some impervious surface requirements from a zoning perspective that we have to deal with. But again, we've had great conversations with the city of Montgomery. We're being very responsive and receptive to uh, where we're locating it on the high school facility and the high school site and making sure that we're uh, cognizant of the neighbors that are across the street and really making sure that it's as, as it always has been slotted really near the highway and up against the highway, which might open up some marketing opportunities, some, you know, visibility opportunities for partnerships. So Mr. Harden always is thinking two steps ahead on those types of uh, ventures. So we will report back uh, our planning commission meeting with the city of Montgomery is March 1st. Uh, so we will report back after that meeting at an upcoming meeting to let you know uh, where we stand with that. Uh, just 
we, as the board has challenged us to continue to look at uh, alternative sites for the relocation of our bus compound, um, we have centered on a potential site. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, again, we are working through the typical process. We're looking at all the costs associated with it. We're looking at all the challenges with the property. We're looking at the potential for um, site utilities and site clearing. Uh, once we get that information and feel confident in uh, working through the zoning process and making sure that it's zoned correctly from Sycamore Township and the intended use for our property, uh, we will report back and give you uh, more information. And, but I know the challenge that we are up against is schedule. Um, and that has not lost on us that we are still on a time crunch because we really, realistically, by the end of 2021, we need the bus compound out of the junior high site so that we can move forward with the remainder of the construction on that site. Sims Elementary, just, you know, again, HGC is also the contractor that we're working with at that site. Um, it, it is just so impressive to watch them work and to see all the things that they have gotten done. Uh, we are nearly out of the ground. Steel uh, should start to show up if it hasn't already this week. Um, again, just the progress that they're making on the new wing is pretty incredible. Uh, we are working to identify some uh, assistance with commercial moving companies. We've interviewed and uh, talked to three different companies to give us some pricing because one of the things that we're gonna be challenged to do is within a couple of days of school being out, we're, we're gonna to need to vacate every room in the building. Um, and that's how aggressive their schedule is. They're gonna tackle uh, most of the above ceiling and moving of walls and knocking down of walls during the summer, and then be able to put most everything back or at least put it together for school to be in session while they're uh, renovating a couple of wings at a time throughout the school year. So um, the phasing and the site logistics and the um, safety are paramount and we'll make sure that we're doing it the right way, but just wanted to let you know that um, things are progressing well. We have a great phasing plan and uh, Mrs. Ralston and her team out at Sims have been extremely accommodating, um, working with our construction team and making sure that we get uh, things lined up for uh, the rest of the year. E.H. Green and the junior high, uh, I have a, well, let's start with E.H. Green and the junior high on the bidding process. Um, bids were going to be due this Friday. Uh, that was an addendum or a change uh, from our original schedule. We were going to have them due on February 11th, but we started to get some requests for extension because there are several contractors, several large general contractors that would like to bid both jobs. And usually one job like this would take about a month to bid. So trying to bid two of them in a month is, is extremely difficult. With the weather and some of the uh, concerns, we did go ahead and grant another extension. Uh, we are granting the extension to next Friday. Um, again, we, the, the, the reason for the extension, we want um, to ensure that these contractors have enough time to get the pricing right. And that's what we care about from a school district standpoint, because from if they don't know a price, they'll throw a general number at it and we will end up paying more for some of the costs. So if there are concerns or, and I would say next Friday is likely the last extension, but that will have given them five plus weeks to be able to get their bids in. And I think at that point, we will feel good that the numbers we have are honed in and hopefully getting us the best pricing that we can get uh, with the market uh, that we have seen. So again, that's being moved to next Friday. Um, and I will report back as soon as we get bids, I should be prepared, hopefully for the March 10th meeting, unless something is uh, really off track. We are hoping that by March 10th, we'll be able to bring you some uh, bids for approval. The other note that I just got before the meeting is Sycamore Junior High was approved tonight by the um, si uh, City of Montgomery City Council. So uh, we are so appreciative of their support and the City Council 
essentially approves the recommendation of the planning commission. So uh, I can say from a school district standpoint and from my standpoint, working with Mrs. Hanau and uh, Mr. Riblet and the folks over at the city, I can only just say we appreciate their partnership and their engagement throughout the process because these approval processes are detailed um, and really take a lot of work. I'd also like to thank our team from SHP and Kleiningers group um, who prepared numerous documents and spent numerous hours preparing for those meetings. And we really got through uh, all the appeal or all the approval process really with uh, minimal change and minimal additional cost. Uh, so again, really appreciate all the residents and all the people that have participated in the process. And, you know, we, we are going to uphold our commitment to make sure we deliver two fantastic projects at EH Green and Junior High, and it'll be a significant change. And I believe a significant upgrade for the city of Montgomery and the city of Blue Ash. So happy to answer any questions. Apologize for the lengthy, uh, update but as you know when you're when you're doing 127 and a half million dollars there's a lot to report on thank you mr lewis um yeah there's a lot of things going on in our district does anyone have any questions no. specific questions all right thank you mr lewis mr forstoffel i do have one um, annou um, announcement this is kind of, we're kind of in the uh, the good news era tonight. So if you'll remember, we had the honor of uh, announcing 22 of our high school students were national merit semifinalists. That's a big deal. Uh, and, and, you know, I won't review all that, but basically the, those great students scored in the top 1% of the PSAT nationally. Though those 22 national merit semifinalists are then submitted for consideration become a national merit finalist. It's my honor to announce that all 22 of them oh, are now okay. national merit finalists. Um, and you know they are now part of a, a unique and special group of, of 16,000 students from across the country and have now placed them in position to receive scholarship awards, which potentially could be announced later this spring. So in order to put uh, name to number, I'd like to go ahead and just read those students' names again. I know we saw them um, in, in the fall and they were all up on the screen doing great stuff that they do, but I just thought I'd go down the list and just honor these great students um, and by their name. And I checked with the high school principal. We gave me permission to release. Sometimes the merit scholarship group is careful about that, but we're okay to do that. <clears throat> so those students are Reagan Becker, Scott Brown, Grant Carter, Noah Dinnerman, Serena Huberty, Jacob Isaacson, Arun Kamath, Niyadi Kachan, Hunter Kurtz, Adidi Malay, Alicia Lowe, Alex Ma, Panathi Mandala, Nora Peck, Janakia Pandaya, Matthew Rines, Adam Rohr, Aiden Schmeling, Arusha Sharmi, Weehan Shi, Rishi Verma, and Grace Shang. Congratulations to those of you who students. Um, we'll certainly get and insert that um, into the into the minutes. So, uh, good news story for those great students at Moore High School. So, Mrs. Weiss, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Mr. Forstoffel. Mr. Forstoffel, yeah, one quick question. Yep. Will we be communicating that to the community? Yes, we will. I'll work with Ms. Palmer to get that. Yes, sir. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right. Moving on, I need a, a motion to approve the treasurer's consent agenda. So moved. Second. Mrs. Weber. Um, not a lot to point out uh, this month. I will note that um, there's a, an increase in the appropriations of a little bit over a million dollars. That's tied back to the um, work that is being done at the high school with the temporary classrooms that Mr. Lewis talked about during his update. Um, next month, you'll see much larger numbers because we'll be adding the budget for not only the additional renovations to Sims, but also the, the budgets for the junior high and green as well. Um, so those will both appear on, on the treasurer's consent agenda as an, in addition to the appropriations for the construction costs of those projects. Okay. Any questions from the board? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. 
Mr. Mallard? Aye. And Mr. Owens? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of um, the January 2021 financial report. So moved. Second. Just a, a couple of things to point out. Um, one of the things that we're tracking um, in this time is uh, real estate receipts. And you can see that they're down a little bit um, from last year as of um, the end, at the end of January. Uh, I will tell you though that in February, we've already received more in February than what um, we, we did in all of February last year. And we should probably still have one more um, advance from the county auditor. So once we get through February, we'll be able to see whether there, there might be increased delinquencies because of, of the pandemic. Um, we're start, we, but we've seen significant bounce back um, in, in the month of February in collections. Um, we have discussed that uh, the state ha has reinstated some of the cuts um, in our state foundation monies. I would point out that that hasn't occurred yet. We'll start to see those come back beginning in the, in, or at least the reduction not being quite as big from last year, beginning in February. Um, one of the other items that we've discussed at a past meeting is that the state has um, is, is going to distribute and work with us on about $1.3 million in additional uh, COVID relief funds from the feds. We um, have been informed that that application will be out probably this week. And our intent is to submit an application to, to utilize those funds to pay for those services we've already uh, been able to uh, secure um, uh, that we've already paid with uh, re our general fund reserves for this year. So um, that was that was good news to hear that we're going to be able to to uh, offset some of that cost from our general fund with federal money. So um, so far, we've spent almost two million dollars in general fund reserves uh, for COVID related efforts. Um, so being able to get back some of those funds and, and really will likely more use those for those continuing costs that we're going to see through the continue through the rest of the school year. So uh, that is all I have. Any questions from the board? All right, Mrs. Lover, thank you and please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballard? Aye. And Mr. Comerford? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the personnel consent agenda. And just as a reminder, there is an addendum to that item 2C. So moved. Second. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballard? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. On to other Board of Education business, legislative liaison report, Mr. Mercurio. Yeah, I do have three things, so I apologize for the length. Um, first one is that our upcoming legislative meetings with Senator Blessing and Representative Miranda are occurring in, within the next week. So we have Senator Blessing tomorrow at 3 p.m. and Representative Miranda um, next Monday at 9 a.m. Um, the second item is House Bill 1 now. This is the former House Bill 305, which is the Fair School Funding Plan. As you recall, they, the House had passed that by a vote of 87 to 9 in December of last year, but then the year expires, so they come with a new bill. Um, this is in response to the governor's proposed budget. Um, this House Bill 1 builds on three years of feedback from uh, from teachers, education professionals, and uh, administrators that have been working with this um, with school funding every day of their lives. So uh, there is hope that even from the governor himself, he acknowledged that he didn't include uh, funding formula change because of all the great work that's been done. And there does seem to be bipartisan support for this. So. Um, the solution, if they do change the formula, will have less reliance on local property um, taxes and will be more of a payment system to the state, which then would distribute. Um, so tomorrow, they're uh, engaging in the governor's MBR, which is their budget, they'll propose budget bill. Um, and it's the only item on the agenda. So 
we expect to hear something very soon. Last thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, ODE spring 2021 testing. Um, state testing is required by both federal and state law, as we know. There has been no legislation enacted to change these legal requirements to this point. Um, ODE reiterated the need to collect testing data during the pandemic to provide insight to trends and phenomena that can help inform the state policy making um, and action. ODE reported that most districts in Ohio did administer the kindergarten readiness exam, um, the third grade reading diagnostic assessment in the fall and end of the course exams to high schoolers. Um, and this data is also key to unlocking many pieces of the equity puzzle. Um, I thought I'd share some key findings from the fall assessments. As far as test taking, the vast majority of eligible students that took the uh, KRA, the Kindergarten Readiness Assessment, and third grade English language arts tests. Um, most took it, but many of the state's most vulnerable students did not take it. Um, lower scores. Scores are generally lo lower across the state than past years, um, especially for Blacks, Hispanics, and economically disadvantaged students. Um, remote education models. The decrease in the rate of fall third grade proficiency, proficiency generally was more marked among students learning in districts using a fully remote education delivery model. Um, and then equity implications. These preliminary data suggest that the state's most vulnerable students generally also have been the most affected. Local data should help tell a more nuanced story about these impacts and inform decisions about addressing the needs of each child. So it will be interesting when we engage in that conversation with our Sycamore specific data. Um, and yeah, that's all I have. I, I will just reiterate on that yeah. last point. We are pulling our data and it's like the board's request to do kind of a comparison face to face versus remote. So we're gonna be prepared to share that if not at the next week, then certainly the one after that. Um, and then certainly building on what Mr. Curio said, uh, we have been and will be ready um, for administration of the test. Um, you know, when unless something changes, we've, we've got our schedule, the teams have been working at the building at the district level, so we'll be ready. The only thing I and sorry about that, I forgot one here, is that there's no option to remotely administer the test. So they're asking that districts get creative, use gyms or other spaces that haven't been used or something, but they're not going to do it remotely. Yeah, so one of the things we'll need to talk about and bring back is the impact if you think about a um, you know, 16th and a student high school based on that requirement, what that may mean in terms of their schedule for administering those tests. So we're, we're working through that. High school has some initial ideas. We're gonna bring the, the district office into that, kind of make sure we can do that in an efficient manner. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I, I would just add a couple of things. <clears throat> One is that uh, the overall budget bill, which is more than just the state funding model is House Bill 110. So that's one that we'll have to continue watching because a lot of times uh, it contains many things that are not typically what you would think of as being budget items. So, um, you know, for example, one of the items in there is that um, all students are required, uh, all, all people, all students have a requirement uh, for graduation to fill out the federal student aid form for, for college. That's in the current House Bill 110. Who knows why, but it's there. So those are the kinds of things we'll have to continue to watch um, and continue to have discussions with our representatives to make sure they make sense and see if there are things that, that really shouldn't even be um, law in the end, but definitely shouldn't be in the budget bill. So uh, just more more things to watch beyond just house bill house bill one which i think will eventually be both probably folded into house bill one time thank you mrs weber all right moving on to uh um, sycamore advisory commission report mr conifer thank you mrs weiss um the advisory commission met last monday february 8th we got our first project report 
and the topic was enhancement of personal financial education. I um, thought it was an excellent report. I wanted to recognize the team that worked together to put that together, which was Elaine Kerr, Nikhil Coley, Ashley Marinich, and Eric Ross. And um, I want to also uh, recognize the administrative contact that we worked with his team, Ash, um, Kelly Wagner. Um, I have shared the presentation with the board um, earlier today and look forward to having a, a series of great uh, project engagements this spring. I was very impressed at the short time window and how well they tackled this, this topic. And uh, you know, kudos to the team and look forward to how we um, move forward uh, next month. Next month's topic is remote learning beyond COVID. So also a very interesting topic. Right. Thank you, Mr. Conifer. Moving on to student achievement, um, just wanted to, Mr. Forstoff will mention some of the data that we'll be, we will be looking at um, as a board in terms of student achievement. And we heard an update from Mr. Mercurio about testing. And uh, Mr. Evans and I have had the opportunity to have some listening sessions with some of our teaching staff who have shared with us some of the challenges that they have, they're facing with um, teaching students. Um, this year, and then also some bright spots of new ways that they're doing things and things that may you may want to continue um, into the next year. So we're kind of getting some information from all avenues. Also wanted to point out that um, Governor DeWine actually put out um, some information on the week of February 8th um, to look to have districts starting to look at um, helping students making up for any lost learning due to the pandemic. And in his release, he says that plans may include extending the school year, beginning the new year early, extending the school day, summer programs, tutoring and remote options. Um, and I know that we'll be considering some of those things as we move forward, as we get more information about um, what our students have experienced this year and where there may be some gaps. So um, that's all I have for student achievement. Uh, strategic planning update. Mr. Forstoffel, yeah, Mr. Mercurio. Thank you, Mrs. Weiss. Yeah, we continue to work um, in concert with uh, LAI. Uh, as we've shared with the board, uh, we have identified uh, year one prior, four year one priorities uh, for the 21 22 school year, and those involve curriculum reporting team, data analysis, culture development, and building leader support team. So, right now, the composition of those leadership teams are being considered. Um, and then uh, after that, once we've determined what the composition of those teams are, uh, we will then bring in LAI who will work with those individual teams to develop really project uh, statement development um, and measurables uh, for each of those. We've, we've roughed out a timeline between now and the end of the year, and, even, and then even looking into the summer, our idea would be is if we can keep this work of the project leader, leadership teams on track, we would bring to the board approval of those project statements and measurables in June. Um, so, but we'll keep the board in the loop as we move forward with that, but that would be kind of the next threshold milestone. So the months of March and April will really be devoted to those teams working uh, to develop uh, those project statements uh, and the measurable uh, outcomes for each of those, uh, those year one priorities. So it's good work. Great, thank yep. you. Mr. McCurry, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, just uh, Mr. Forsoffel, I know you'll keep me in the loop yep. because these teams start to grow. Yep. Okay. All right, moving on to superintendent search update. Uh, I would just like to thank everyone in the community, both the school community, the community at large, um, and our administration for completing. We had 444 uh, surveys completed to give input to K-12, which is the um, uh, consulting firm that we are using to help us find a new superintendent, as well as 193 people who joined on focus, the Zoom focus groups um, with Mrs. Campbell. Um, and just wanted to thank everyone for their input. We're continuing to develop our superintendent search profile. And in a few weeks, we will start to review specific candidate um, applications and resumes. Um, the March board meeting schedule. Um, the board. Could, will, oh, sorry. Melissa, can I make one comment? Because Absolutely. on the superintendent search, Deb Campbell highlighted just how very much she appreciated and was impressed, Beth, with your work to help oh. do the coordination. And I just wanted to give you that affirmation 
you weren't in the room, but um, they do a lot of searches, and I think you stood out to them, and I wanted you to know that. Thank you. It'll be retrieving you shortly, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, all right, moving on to the March board meeting schedule, just a reminder that the board will convene on the second and fourth Mondays in March to accommodate our superintendent search timelines as well as spring break. Um, meeting dates will be March 10th and March 24th. Okay, on to some other um, agenda items. I need a motion for the approval of a settlement agreement. So second. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Cullifer? Aye. Um, Mr. Ballard? Aye. And Mrs. White? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the um, approval of the resolution directing um, our superintendent to complete performance evaluations of administration. So moved. Second. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballot? Aye. And Mr. Crawford? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion to go into executive session in accordance with OR's. Okay. Just, yes. um, just one more comment, and it's just building on um, the discussion on the listening sessions, because I think we've actually completed um, eight listening sessions now um, across the community with the PTOs and the um, classified, certified staff, teachers, um, admins, uh, EAs, et cetera. And um, Mrs. Weiss and I just appreciate all the engagement from the uh, staff and the PTOs in those discussions. Um, the feedback's been distributed to the board so people have a chance to review the comments and help um, inform our discussions as we keep going forward with those. But I think also just one of the pieces of feedback for everybody in the community um, is that we got a lot of positive feedback just on the um, the video and the Zoom meetings through all those groups, and it seemed to be one more positive communication tools for them to stay informed in what's going on in the district, where they can review the uh, meetings and look at it in their own time and then get caught up on what's going on. So I'm not sure that was a complete surprise to us, but across every one of the different subgroups that we talked to, they like this communication tool. So just something to keep in mind that we get a lot of engagement and. Thank you to Mr. Fritz for keeping the technology working. There are a lot of eyeballs out there uh, using this. So anyway, just wanted to say appreciate everyone on supporting this session. We've had some Mr. Evans for, trying it out. For bringing that up and closing the loop on that. Um, anyone else have any other issues before we move to go into executive session? All right, I need a motion to go into executive session in accordance with ORC. 121.22G1, Employment Dismissal Evaluation Compensation Appointment and Discipline of a Public Employee Official or Regulated Individual in accordance with ORC 121.22G4, Negotiations, and in accordance with ORC 121.22G2, Purchase of Property. We do not expect a vote after this executive session. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Cunnifer? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And Mr. Ballard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a nice evening.